Mustang is one of the last great bastions of adventure in Nepal, and what better way to explore it than by the seat of a motorcycle? Arriving in Kathmandu, the first, uh, the first day, uh, we uh, had a cultural dinner. The Nawari, uh, Nawari people are uh, quite a large population in Kathmandu. Our dinner was um, cultural uh, Nawari, and we got a sample of uh, all the other ethnic groups in the area. And they did a lot of dancing, uh, cultural dancing. A most enjoyable experience to get to know friends that would be coming along on the trip with us. The next day, uh, I had asked that we do two days of heritage visits in Kathmandu because of the significance of these older religious sites, cultural sites and architectural sites. Kathmandu was, uh, it was really congested and, and busy. It was like uh, an organized chaos and um, it was uh, kind of intense for me and, uh, and, and kind of exciting at the same time and uh, uh, maybe a little intimidating as well.
whole time we've been riding these uh, Royal Enfield Himalayans. We've been taking them through mud, construction, dirt roads, death-defying bus passes. These bikes have been awesome. Not only does it have the torque uh, that's needed to pull you through the difficult water crossings or through the heavy sand, um, but it's also super comfortable to ride over five, six, seven, eight, nine hours of riding through the day. After the cities of Kathmandu and Pokhara, the first real location that we rode to was Marfa, where we had a chance to explore the winding cobblestone streets under an incredible canopy of prayer flags. And it was like every corner that we turned seemed to hold a thousand mysteries. We also got to sample the local made apple brandy, climb the stairs and visit the monastery to take in the incredible views of Marfa, as well as interact with some of the beautiful people in the town. Well, the best part about traveling like this is the opportunity to stop and get off the bikes and then just walk around and chat with people and interact with the culture. And you don't get to experience that in so much maybe in a, a bus or a car. We have the opportunity to raise your hand and just stop anytime. See something that you like on the side of the road or you, you want to linger a little bit longer and have a conversation with someone in a shop or just have the opportunity to get off the bike and explore, sneak down an alley and see what's there. I was apprehensive the first time we came across one of those suspension bridges. It seemed like it was okay, but I'm not sure I want to take another one again. <laughs> on this trip, the most maybe moving, I would say, would be the topography, the views, just coming around a, a, a tight corner and then being able to look up and see just a high mountain peak or a valley below you, switchback roads, a water crossing. Every single one of those things makes you excited to just go around the next corner and go farther. So even at the end of the day when you're tired, you really don't want to stop riding. You know, you just want to keep going and seeing what's next, what's over the next hill, what's around the next corner. When we got to Kag Beni, we visited Muktinath, and that that was a, a place of very big spiritual or religious significance. And um, it intrigued me from the first day I heard about it. They have a water spout system, 108 water spouts that people run through. Um, for me, I did it because I appreciated the fact that both the Buddhists and the Hindus can both worship together uh, which is uh, which is something not often seen in the Western Hemisphere. One of the standout things on this trip for me has been food, dalbat. That's on the top of my list now when I go home to try to find a restaurant where I can, I can get that. Uh, the food's been fine for me. Uh, we, we've had a lot of uh, chow mein, uh, chicken momos, and uh, I like the chutney that they serve here. Had a lot of beer too. Sean. <laughs> The food, Nepali food, absolutely fantastic. Um, something that you cannot experience anywhere else. I found the food to be very delicious. That's so cheesy. The highlight of the trip was actually riding. I enjoyed all the cultural events. I loved watching and seeing things, but at heart, I'm a motorcycle rider. So I loved riding the bikes. That was my highlight. 
As a motorcycle adventure rider, uh, we love mountains. And to see the Himalayas in, in all its splendor was everything I dreamt for. The terrain up here is just phenomenal. The roads are constantly switching back and forth. There's heaps of stones and sand. Uh, it's a real off-roading experience. We, we rode as high as 14,000 feet and uh, I definitely felt uh, a loss of power in the bikes, but um, it didn't seem to be uh, too much of an issue for me. The real endpoint of our journey was Lomatang, the ancient walled city high in the Himalayas. This trip uh, gave us almost three days in Lomantang. A uh, beautiful religious sites, chortons, uh, stupas, temples, monasteries, Buddhist uh, culture. The people were absolutely um, relaxed. They were welcoming. Although there's obviously a uh, language barrier, we were able to communicate. They provided a, a real warm feeling that was most enjoyable. Until recently, Lomatang was actually closed, um, and that's how it kind of got its nickname of the Forbidden Kingdom. Now people can go there and experience this incredible Tibetan and Nepali mix culture, um, go into the monasteries and wander around and see just all the amazing ancient relics uh, that are there in this walled city. Well, we went up to the uh, the Chosar Caves uh, when we were in uh, Loma Thang, and we got to experience how people lived. Uh, it was surreal uh, going up there and just walking through kind of a, a, an ancient cave where where people used to live and defend themselves from uh, from some warring tribes. Really, uh, quite an experience. After 14 days high in the Himalayas, with our highest point being 14,500 feet, we're back down here in the valley at Chitwin National Park. While here we've been on safari, we've seen rhinos, elephants, crocodiles. It feels like something out of the Jungle Book. It's been amazing. The best part of traveling, in as much as I love motorcycling, is, is people. Because without that, there's a certain component of the experience that is removed that connects people together in a pretty powerful way that really makes me remember the trip. Amazing. All right. Hey, we're good. Cool. Thank you so much. Damn. I didn't hit record. No, I'm kidding. <laughs>